pass the loop, man of God, pass, pass the loop, man of God, pass the loop, man of God, man the Bible, it is true. Vision chasers. If, 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 if you don't have a vision and you just getting up, going along to get along, then you can just eavesdrop on the sermon on the day. But for those of us that have something that God has showed us, I need somebody to shout, it's time to go get it. Here it is. A vision is a promise asking permission to live. If you can conceive it, you can achieve it. God will do what you can't do, but God will not do what you won't do. If you want your vision to come to pass, hear me this morning, then you have got to go get it. Come here, come here. I'm going to get to the Word, but I need to talk to you this morning because some of you, you started off well this year. You started out running, but you've allowed people, you've allowed places, you've allowed threats, you've allowed things, you've allowed naysayers to slow up your chase. But I've come this morning to tell you, never allow yourself to be diluted because people can't handle you at 100 proof. Because they don't know what God showed you, and you may have to go through some things, but I've come to tell you that you shall achieve what God told you you were going to achieve. Saints of God, everybody chases something. Everybody. You chase something, be it a career, be it a job, be it a certain comfort letter, level, be it another person. Everybody chases something. We all have something that we keep at the forefront of our mind that we consider to be an immovable priority. Are you hearing me? And so we put time into it. We put sweat equity into it. Every morning when our foot hits the floor, that's what's on our mind. Everybody has, has something that they are chasing. It's a goal that we're trying to get closer to. I need you to understand that you don't chase a vision out of curiosity. You chase a vision out of commitment and conviction. When God shows you something, you have to be so convicted by it that nothing else, no matter what's happening in your life, nothing can deter you from chasing after it. And I can't have you spending all of your time, all of your years, all of your finances, all of your resources trying to chase after something that's strictly fleshly that you neglect the spiritual part of you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So now we got that piece out the way. Let's talk about the Word of God. Everything that I will ever be or need to accomplish the vision, I already have it in me. It may be in seed form, but I need you to understand that everything that you need, you already have it in you. So when God gives you a vision in life, it is not contingent, hear me saints, upon you receiving anything from an external source. It is contingent upon you discovering what he's already put inside of you and chasing after it. You are anointed to be successful, but you think like a failure. What if you've already been anointed to be great but you think you're too weak to be great. What if you've already been anointed to be the head, but you convince yourself you are the tail? What if you've already been anointed to be above, but you keep living like you are beneath? Somebody, somebody, we 
do not arrive to the place of our anointing. We arrive to the place of our thinking. Because the Bible says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Your mind has to grab hold of the vision before your body will ever pursue it. Your body will not pursue anything that your mind is not convinced it can have. Man of God, Pastor Luke, man of God, and the Bible, it is true.